Atopic dermatitis is considered as a type of rash where its main cause is allergy. Using steroid to control atopic dermatitis is of a common knowledge, but is known to be very difficult to cure because the cause of its complexity having various factors. Sometimes steroid don't affect very well. Because of that, some people think steroid is terrible. However, we think allergies are not the main cause of atomic dermatitis. I suspect natural healing response to viral warts is the main cause of atopic dermatitis. We have good results regarding to the treatment of atopic dermatitis. These are our hypotheses. I will summarize the characteristics of warts. Number one, when the skin is infected with a wart virus, the human papilloma virus, there is a change in the skin appearance. Number two, when the natural healing re reaction is activated, inflammation appears showing redness, itching, excoriation of the skin. Number three, this is the important point. When there is a micro injury to the skin, we see an increase in the number of warts. Number four and number five, is a little different from everyone's common knowledge of atopic dermatitis treatment. There are different sizes of warts. The most common size is about 1 to 2 millimeters. Warts appear in multiple types and appearances. Some are small and multiple, and most probably, I assume, even more smaller warts exist. This is an illustration of number one and number two. So-called warts is here. Redness and itching will appear when the natural healing begins. Please remember this illustration. From here, I will explain in three different parts. First of all, this is one treatment example. This is a typical example. During the atopic dermatitis, by use of many, mainly steroid, has been widely practiced for a long time. I will zoom up the picture. As you can see, there is a decrease in the number of warts. An interesting point is, not only is there a decrease in the number of warts, we can also see a big deep drop in IgE, which usually takes time to decrease. The second example had also been treated by a typical method, steroid. The severity is improved. An interesting point is the initial worsening of the rash. The third patient was treated by a dermatologist of a university specialty outpatient clinic, but it didn't improve. It seems like dermatitis, but when we zoom the photo, we can see multiple warts. During the treatment, the so-called wart began to appear, but with consistent treatment, it disappeared. The fourth patient is an example of severe atopic dermatitis, which his IgE exceeded 100,000. Multiple warts are visible. It was improved by liquid nitrogen spray. There are very few cases where we can diagnose with naked eye. Normally, it requires an enlargement. The fifth example, with the improvement of the rash, we were able to confirm the decrease of more smaller warts by digital microscope this method is not suitable for observing its clinical course because it is difficult to locate a specific spot. This is the data of seven patients treated by this method. Laboratory data and itching has decreased. This is my hypothesis. 
I would like you to first understand and accept the idea I have been talking about for you to understand what I'm going to explain from now. The widely practiced treatment is the use of immunosuppressants like steroid and protopic. Actually, non-steroid treatment is also practiced. Our method is the third one, activating the immune system. Resistance to the virus is considered to be widely distributed from strong people to weak people. What we can say from this graph is that we can th roughly divide the atopic dermatitis patients into three groups. Even within atopic dermatitis patients, there are differences in the ability to eliminate the virus. The population on the left side of the curve are the patients with strong spontaneous healing ability and therefore there is no onset of dermatitis. The population in the middle of the curve, which is the first group, has a medium spontaneous healing ability and therefore dermatitis begins to heal with a little help of steroids. The problem is the population on the right side of the curve, the patients with low ability to eliminate the virus, the ones with little self-recovering ability. Now, the second group, although it may take time, some time, since they have the ability to eliminate the virus to a certain amount, self heals at the end. These are the patients that heal with steroid withdrawal therapy. Lastly, the third group, where there is very low ability to eliminate the virus, needs a treatment to activate the skin's immune system. When we use steroids, which is an immunosuppressive treatment, it may seem as if the dermatitis has become better, but with other non-immunosuppressive treatments, the dermatitis once becomes worse and then the dermatitis begins to heal. Even within the same group, there is a difference in the way it heals. Because most of the atopic dermatitis patients are in the average group 1, where the use of steroids leads to the spontaneous healing process in general, the treatment with steroids are considered a typical and general treatment. This treatment will worsen the dermatitis in the second and third group where the ability to eliminate the virus is very low. Since the patients of the second and third group do not come back for a return visit, doctors tend to see more patients in the group of patients of the first group and therefore tend to think steroid treatment is very effective. Since steroids are immunosuppressatory, it relieves the symptoms and therefore doctors and even patients of the second and third groups are convinced that this is the correct treatment and tend to continue on for a long term. The patients of group 2, the second large population, begins to self-heal when they quit using steroids. However, because of group 2 patients who heals with the disuse of steroids, it is sometimes hindering the treatment of the patients of group 1 and 3 where group 1 patients should use steroids and group 3 patients not only need to stop use steroids but on top of that need to activate its skin immune system. Group 3, which is the smallest group, is considered as a group with the least ability to eliminate the virus. Therefore, there is a necessity to activate its immune response. When the skin immune system is activated in groups 1 and 2, there are times when the symptom rather aggravates and treatment will seem as if it is prolonged. But as long as the pruritus can be controlled, there is a possibility that the group 1 and group 2 patients strong dream to heal can come true. With steroid treatment, in some, it clears up the dermatitis immediately 
and in other patients, they tend to increase in skin immune system as they become adults and cures with time. People in this green frame can well be controlled by the use of mainly steroid treatment. On the other hand, there are patients that become worse with the use of steroids because of the increase in the number of virus due to the immunosuppression of the skin. These patients change the hospitals, try steroid withdrawal therapy, or turn to folk remedies. Within group 2, there are people who completely heal with withdrawal of steroids and people who do get better to a point, but do not completely heal. But the group here, which is the group within the green frame, both the patients and the doctors are satisfied. People in the red circle return to normal treatment, or try other folk remedies, or just give up the treatment. The third method is to activate the skin immunity. This treatment may be effective for patients of group 1 and 2 where it does not completely heal. Factors that affect the treatment. Liquid nitrogen therapy has three effects, physical, vascular, and immune effects. In this case, we use a liquid nitrogen spray therapy expecting the activation of the skin immunity. Remember that the micro-injury of the skin increases the amount of virus. Therefore, stopping the scratching of the skin is a key point here. Treatment when there is an aggravation of dermatitis is also important. It has been said for a long time that the aggravation factors of atopic dermatitis are house dust, mites, hay fever, cold, food allergies, etc. It can be explained by thinking that those factors activate the immune system and therefore enters a switch to exclude the wart virus. In our clinic, we try the third method to patients with weak skin immune system, and we are getting good results. We have not yet been able to prove it molecular biologically. Atopic dermatitis is commonly controlled by the use of steroids. However, if my guess is correct, since the redness and itching means the elimination of warts and its elimination process is hindered with immunosuppressive agents, it is therefore preventing the natural healing and as a result, there is a possibility that the symptom will worsen on the long run. I assume my theory that the development of atopic dermatitis is the result of the natural healing response to the wart virus is not easily accepted. I expect that the immunosuppressive treatment will continue for a while. The theory might be accepted someday. The use of steroids on viral infection is on the counterintradiction list of the steroid ointment antibate. If my idea is correct, the use of the steroids on virus wart is not good. In the future, I suspect that steroids won't be used for atopic dermatitis. If you have even a bit interest in this treatment, please try it. It will take longer in severe patients. In order for you not to quit, please first find patients with the following conditions. Start on friends or family members with mild atopic dermatitis. If you cannot find someone with atopic dermatitis, try this with other types of dermatitis. The cure of someone close to you will encourage you to continue on with this treatment. We encourage you to treat children with this method because they are more easily cured. Please refer to my website. Thank you for listening.